All right, let's continue. So we was at the point where we were talking about how the man and the woman, how Jah would give them up to those who turned his truth into a lie. You understand? And, and those who have turned their backs. What's interesting among black folks is that mm, many, many of even the conscious ones out there would admit that Christ is black. Mm-hmm. They have that amount of knowledge in among the hip-hop culture that's trying to make hip-hop a god or a religion or something like that. They would recognize that, that Christ is black. And, and they, they recognize some of the basic truths concerning it, but they don't seek to live it. Some of them might even recognize that we are Israelites on a certain level, you understand, but don't want to live it. So this means that they, they acknowledge that truth, but they change the truth of Jah, of God, into a lie. And they worship and serve the creature more than the creator. So they may pretend themselves to be church-going Christians, so forth and so on, but they still are worshiping the what? The creature. Mm -hmm. This is one of the forms of the creature. This is the talisman of the creature that they worship. They worship this creature. You understand? Know the spiritual Egypt. You see it all here. You understand? Know you see it all here. Corruptible man. There's your corruptible man that the Bible is talking about. See the corruptible man? The Roman. And it's interesting that even they talk about Nicki Minaj and these other so called um, performers and pseudo artists out there. You can see what she did some Roman holiday thing and she says her demon is Roman. Well, this book, Romans actually speaks to that. These are examples of those who change the truth of Jah into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, and because of this now, it says that God, the true God, that Jah gave them up to vile affections, to vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to guess or figure out what it's speaking of right here. You understand? Know Who changed their natural use. You understand? Know and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, they burned in their lusts one toward another. So we see the rise of this so called homosexual agenda that's, that's all tied into this. So we see where it begins from. And we see all the manifestations of it. And this chapter, Romans chapter 1, is laying it out for us right here. Verse 27, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, they burned in their lusts one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. It's not seemly. In other words, it's, it's not proper, it's not me. And receiving in themselves. You understand? Know Receiving in themselves the, 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 the Kabbalistic judgment in themselves that recompense, the, that recompense of the error, which was me. That recompense of the error, which is me. In other words, death. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they had knowledge of God, but they didn't retain that knowledge. They didn't preserve that knowledge. They didn't keep it. You know what I'm saying? Like they heard it one in one ear and out the other. It says that Jah gave them over to a reprobate mind. Now that's that criminal mind. You know what I'm saying? So we can see this connection also among the lost sheep. The criminal mind gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, to do those things which are not proper, those things which are not right, black on black violence, the, the, the drugs, the prostitution, the destruction of the families, the homes, the, the, the society, the, the implosion being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Jah despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, without any sort of overstanding, covenant breakers, overstand that covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, 
who, knowing the judgment of Jah, they know the judgment of Jah. This was clear. They know the judgment of Jah that they which commit such things are worthy of death. You understand? Are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They have pleasure in watching their fav favorite hip hop or rap artists or or sports figures or uh, celebrities or entertainers. You understand? Express. This is why they call these. These celebrities, entertainers, sports figures, they call them their idols. See, it's very clear. They call them their idols. So they've changed the, the glory of the uncorruptible God into what? Corruptible men and people. And they worship these men and people, you understand, as their idols or as their gods, basically, because they fulfill the Masonic so-called illogic you know saying? Goma, Oz, the bar, strength, wisdom, and beauty. Now, beauty is really a word. You know what I'm saying? And this is what really links it back to the God spell. You know what I'm saying? God spell. Now, in dyslexic and reverse, this is dog. You know what I'm saying? And we've touched on that briefly, but the dog or anibus is also connected with what? Death. You see, the dog is also connected with death, which is very interesting when we look at spiritual Egypt or ancient Egypt. Anubis or Anpu is connected with death. And we know how the Gentiles worship that particular um, dog-headed deity. Some link that with An um, Anubis with um, um, the Baphomet or the Batimat. You understand the Batimat um, imagery of uh, Satanism and free masonry, so forth and so on. But Jah here gives a judgment, right? Gives a judgment. Gives a judgment of these things, a judgment which is very, very clear. Now, what's exposed right here in the book of Romans, chapter 1, is the basics. You understand? We have the basics exposed right here very, very clearly for us, step by step. It even points out the seven stages of it. There are stages. And then we see what the result now on a global level is like, all within this particular chapter, which speaks on the, the guilty, you know what I'm saying? The guilty world. The seclorum is guilty. You know what I'm saying? And this is what they're fearing. They're fearing that judgment, but they're trying to keep themselves going in their delusion, you know what I'm saying, until that particular judgment is fulfilled on them. So here's a basic of the Gomer Oz Bar. You understand? The ghost spell the so-called gospel. Now, Oz, Ooze, Ooze, we point out, is connected with, um, with, uh, with Abraham. Abraham came out of this place called Ooze. So let's document this. Let's document this for, for our study right here. Let us um, go to Abraham and Ooze and see Ooze in the Bible. Now, Ooze is said to mean wisdom. That is 121, roughly or so, um, uh, matches to this particular search. What we're going to do is go to 10 and 23, right, for, for a city, a location. This is a city, a location. Now, it's interesting how the, this acronym here, when we break down this particular acronym and we link it with Gomer. Gomer, they say, means strength but it really means a kind of a perfection, a cipher. You know what I'm saying? We dealt with that in the metaphysical breakdown of the G. You know what I'm saying? Now here we're at O's or O's, you understand? And we have 10, 10 and uh, I think it's 23. Let's go to 10 and 23 of Genesis. So we're in Genesis 10 and um, is it 10 and 23? Uh, um, ten and ten and the children of of Aram is Uz. So yeah, the children, the children of Aram is Uz, right? We have Aram and Uz in ten and twenty three. Now when we go to um, when we go to let's see, we have Who's, we have Booze. You understand? Now, Abraham came out of Ur. Mentioned Abraham came out of Ur, but now you have to know he's linked with that particular family. 
right? Now, when we go to the book of Job, you know what I'm saying? Job, see, Job is connected. Let's put Job here. Now, it's interesting. If you read this the other way, you have Job, Job. Remember Job in the Bible? Connected with wisdom. Remember his story? Very, very interesting. Ooh, right there. Now, it actually was Aram. You know what I'm saying? Aram, who is linked as an ancestor, you know, a relationship of Abraham. Speaking of ooze right there. Now, the bar. The bar is interesting because the bar means word. You know what I'm saying? The bar actually means word in the sense of word, right? Now, there's a link with this right here with beauty because we see about the gospel is that particular word, but the word also links with the spell. You understand? Because you have to be able to spell a word. You understand? As well as speak a word. As well as understand a word. So we have the cipher of this perfectly linked, you understand, in going and spelling the God spell, the God spell and the ghost spell. So we're going to touch on this a little bit more as we move forward. Um, we're going to get into some, some other related matters, but ones had ones were asking about this, you know, the whole G-O-D thing and um, uh, Freemasonry, you understand, and the God, the God of this world. So we thought it was very important to kind of go into it. But to sum up here, let's just speak about controlled language. This is why language is so very important, because they use controlled language. And here we're in Let's Make a Slave, right? Let's Make a Slave. All right, let's make a slave. And last part of this is dealing with controlled language. What was done to the lost sheep. And we have to undo this. We have to recognize this is what was done and to undo it before it's, before it's too late. You understand? So the language is very, very important. They say once, I, once the crossbreeding has been completed between those tribes that were the, the Beta Israel, the Hebrew so-called Africans, and the, the, the paganistic Africans, you, you understand? Once it was a crossbreeding of us completed, that's very important to understand that crossbreeding at that particular point. It says, for further severance from their original beginning, we must completely annihilate the mother language or the mother tongue. So they had to completely take away from us our so-called African, you understand, and Afro-Shemitic tongues and, and speech patterns of both the new nigger and the new mule. Now, the new nigger was the new so-called African fresh over. The mule was part of those who were crossbred, you know what I'm saying, and institute a new language that involves the new life's work of both. So they would institute, you know what I'm saying, and they instituted among black folks a new language, you know what I'm saying, a new language, and this is People talk about Ebonics, you know and make a joke out of that. That's a cover story for the controlled language, you know what I'm for, for, From the perspective of the white supremacists or the Gentiles, this is what they had to do. They had to, to break us off from our original beginning so we wouldn't know our original beginning. And this is why many black people, when you talk about Black History Month, they always go back a little bit to slavery and and, and, and to Africa, and they said, we don't really know where we're from. That's a lie. We know who we are. You know what I'm saying? There's evidence of who we are. They try to make it like a mystery because they want to keep us broken from our original beginning so they can completely annihilate our mother tongue. You see what I'm saying? Our mother tongue, our mother languages, but this is also dealing with our mind state. We are pointing out that, um, uh, who's the brother? Um, Marcus Garvey, he had even said, Three things we need. We need a, a new Bible, we need a new dictionary, and a new money mint. You see what I'm saying? But notice the order of that. We need a new Bible. You understand? We need a new Bible. And a new Bible basically is not, is not um, making up a Bible, but we need our original tongues, language, our Ethiopic Bible to get to our Hebrew, Shemitic, Afro-Shemitic roots as a people. So when we're studying the Bible, we're not just studying as a Gentile does, but we're studying 
getting back to our connecting once again to our original beginnings and therefore our mother tongue. So uh, Willie, Slick Willie Lynch goes on and he says, you know, language is a peculiar institution. It leads to the heart of a people, language. So there's, a, there's an artificial language that black people are using. This means there's an artificial heart, too. If this is true, that language is a peculiar institution and that it leads to the heart of a people, the more a foreigner knows about the language of another country, the more he is able to move through all levels of that society. So part of the reasons why some blacks make it so-called and some don't is that the ones who make it understand or intuit the particular language of the society that they're trying to move through. Others are limited, you know, ghetto or speak ghetto or slang or, or ebonics or whatever else that it may be. Therefore, if the foreigner is an enemy of another country, to the extent that he knows the body of the language, to that extent is the country vulnerable to attack or invasion of a foreign culture. For example, you take a slave. If you teach him all about your language, he will know all your secrets. This is interesting. So this is why we went through the God spell. You understand? Some of the secrets behind the G-O-D. You understand? And he is then no more a slave, for you can't fool him. You can't fool him any longer. So the intention of the enslaver, the intention of this seclorum, this Gentile world system, was to fool the lost sheep, was to fool we as black Hebrews, black Jews, as Beta Israel, Ethiopian Hebrews. And being a fool is one of the basic ingredients of an incident to maintenance of the slavery system. In other words, fooling a people is a basic ingredient of and an incident to maintaining a slavery system. If you told a slave that he must perform in getting out, quote, our crops. And he knows language well, and he knows the language well. So you, you said to the slave, you know, getting out our crops, right? He would know that our crops didn't mean our crops, and the slavery system would break down. For he would relate on the basis of what, quote, our crops really meant. So you have to be careful in setting up the new language for the slave. So our whole language, or the language we think our language is, was all set up. And, and Willie Lynch, you understand, and white supremacy and the foundation of this system already told us these things from such a time. So they, they, they warn each other here. So you have to be careful in setting up the new language of the slave, for the slave, would soon be in your house talking to you man to man, and that is death to your economic system. See, that is death to the white supremacist system when we can talk man to man. So they must keep it, you understand, in equal one race above the next and based on color and based on a lot of other distinctions. You understand? Um, let's see. In addition, in addition, the definition of words or terms are only a miniature part of the process. So what we've dealt with right here is just a miniature. We just took this particular word, you understand, and broke it down and tried to give some of the biblical, you understand, the biblical link, because if you go out there on the Internet, there's a lot of information that is very questionable, you understand, that would say that it's Hebrew, but then they'll give you a wrong definition of this. Really, this... This particular word is, 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 means perfection or completion. This is why we're in a Gentile world system, because we're at a time of what they call um, perfection or, let's say, completion. Right? Completion or perfection. Gomer. You understand? Strength. Now, there's a deeper meaning to this as well that will connect with the heart of the Babylon when you go into Gomer, who exactly was Gomer and ooze, ooze, wisdom or consultation. 
you know what I'm saying, and the bar, beauty, or really the word, you know what I'm saying, the devar, devar, word, like the devar Torah, the word of the Torah, you know, the reasoning, in other words, the word in the sense of a reasoning, a matter, and you say, what's the matter, and then there's a reasoning, it's not just a word, singular word, but it's an idea, it's a story, you know what I'm saying, one can even go into that in the sense of the mythology, the mystery. There's a backstory to it, in other words. So here they say that it's just a miniature. The words and terms is only a miniature part of the process. Values are created and transported by communication through the body of the language. A total society has many interconnected value systems. All these values in the society has bridges of language to connect them for orderly working in the society. But for these language bridges, these many value systems would sharply clash and cause internal strife or civil war, the degree of the conflict being determined by the magnitude of the issues or relative opposing strength in whatever form. For example, if you put a slave in a hog pen and train him to live there and incorporate in him to value it as a way of life completely, the biggest problem you would have out of him is that he would worry you about provisions to keep the hog pen clean or partially clean, or he might not worry you at all. On the other hand, if you put this same slave in the same hard pen and make a slip and incorporate something in his language whereby he comes to value a house more than he does his hard pen, you got a problem. He will soon be in your house. So this is the summary words from Let's Make a Slave or the Wooly Lynch uh, letters, papers, where they're speaking of controlled language, how it was necessary to um, cut off us from our Afro-Shemitic, our African languages, and then to incorporate in us a new sense of language, really a false sense of language. Now, there are three things that they um, point out here, just to sum up, and this also connects with the big picture of what we've been um, ministering and preaching and teaching on. Um, these three things. One was the role reversal. You understand? The woman, black woman, independence, and black man in fear, or black man in phobias. You understand? In phobia. This is the mind state. This is the mind state to blind, to blind the mind, right? So we almost have the woman independence. We can see a, a miniature and a caricature of the Ganetta Eden, or the Garden of Eden right there, and the, and, and the old time serpent. You understand who's called the devil, the liar, so that you can see the change from the truth, the God of truth, to the God of the world, the God of the seclorum, right? And, and how money now has become, you understand, the God in that sense, you know, or the representative of the God of the seclorum. Secondly, it was crossbreeding, creating multi-levels of differences. You see... Many think that all the slaves that were brought over here were Israelites. Not all the slaves were Beit Israel. This is one thing we have to be very clear on. Not all of them were Beit Israel. There were other tribes, other peoples who also got caught up in that in that whole um, in that whole event. You understand that whole um, transatlantic, trans-Ethiopic ocean event. So not every slave that came over here was a Beit Israel or was Hebraic. And they understood that. And they did not want us to stay in our tribal, um, our tribal uh, uh, groups. So what they did was create this crossbreeding among more paganistic Africans. And a, and a key of this, I, I was speaking to a sister recently, and um, I touched on this song from Biggie, Biggie, uh, Biggie Smalls. He did this song called uh, Give Me the Loot, Give Me the Loot, you know, the song Give Me the Loot. And that song, Give Me the Loot, he says, I've been robbing these niggas since a slave ship using the same whip. So I stopped. I said, wow. 
is he saying he's been doing this? I mean, what is he, is he channeling this? But what the Holy Spirit, what the intuition, my father told me, what, you know, what, what, what the Spirit of God revealed to me of this is that this is to show that not all the, the, the slaves who came over here, you know, they may be your color, but they're not your kind. Not all of them are our people in truth. This is why it says that there will be only a remnant. You understand? A remnant alone will be saved and preserved through this that we're going through right now. So there's that idea that all black people got to come together, all black people got to unite. That's a fantasy. You understand? That's a, that, 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 that's a fantasy, straight up. Because you have to recognize that there were cross-breeding and there was a creation of multi-level of differences, you understand, that were tribal. And in linking with the tribal differences, there were spiritual and ideas concerning God that differed as different as day and night. You, you know, and it was some, some of the black tribes of Africa, some of their, how can you say, spiritual orientations are on the same level as the European. You, you have to understand that, that, that they are, are all not of the same, we're not all of the same tribe, in the sense we're not all of the same family, we're not all Beta Israel. Not all black people over here are Beta Israel. There are many Hebrew tribes, but not all of the, quote, Hebrew Abrahamic tribes subscribe to the true God. Many of them subscribe to the God of this world. So there's a spiritual, what I'm trying to stress is that spiritual difference, not even religious, which you can see it religiously, but there's a spiritual difference, Jehovah's. And this is why when Christ spoke about um, the last day that one will be taken of a family or, you know, it's like you wonder how come your brother or sister or others you grew up with can't see the truth too, you understand? Know and, and they've been exposed to the same circumstances. There's a spiritual calling and a spiritual distinction. You know, that's the next level of, 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 of consciousness is the spiritual level. And you have to be able to, to, to recognize and see spiritually. That, that you may have a, a blood relation, and you may love that blood relation, but that doesn't mean that that one has been called or received the truth in the same way that you receive the truth. And so we trace a kind of a link to this cross-breeding that went on because they would breed different tribes together. You understand? So that would create, as they say, a multi-level, a multiplicity of differences you know what I'm saying? Not just physical feature differences, those also, but also differences of, of consciousness, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or spiritual, um, spiritualities, let's put it like that, right? Thirdly was language. That's the part that we touched on and we've been touching on in these few videos right here is on language, taking the word G-O-D, the word God, breaking it down so-called Freemasonically, you understand? Because you have to remember this world system was built, you understand, through Freemasonry. This present Gentile world system was built by Freemasons. So we can say that the God of this world is the so-called Freemasonic interpretation or misinterpretation of God. And it's necessary to recognize that because otherwise everything else you think you understand about mystery Babylon will remain a mystery. You have to recognize that particular connection. So the God of this world is not the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, called Jesus Christ. We have to recognize that distinction right there. And not all black people, because they are black, are our particular people, even if they may be on a family level. The Bible tells you that, first of all. If you love mother, father, sister, brother, you understand, son, daughter, more than me, you're not worthy of me. You understand? And, there's, and there's, it's all throughout the scripture, really, when you look at that, that coming out, that, that making a decision. You understand? If any man or woman choose to separate themselves to Jah, seek to separate themselves to the Lord, they shall be holy, they shall be separate. So that's an individual the Almighty, the true God, 
and Father gives us free will. You know what I'm saying? We can make our wills obedient to good influences, or you can do what you will. You know what I'm saying? But if you do what you will, that's the whole law of sin and death. But if you make your wills obedient to good influences, and you come to the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, you have life, and life more abundantly in this world and the world to come. It so happens that the point in in the dispensation and in the time that we're at right now is right on that cusp. You see, we're in 2012, we're right at that particular time, so we see certain things um, heightening, you understand? And even the signs and even the, 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 the density of, of the spiritual dis-ease is becoming even more and more pronounced, more and more brazen as we come to that particular time and the day of the Lord. But the day of the Lord is not the so-called December 21st, 2012 as a day. The day of the Lord, biblically, scripturally speaking, it is a year. It's a year. Recognize, recognize that. It's going to be a year or a space of time, roughly, you understand what we can call a year, unlike anything that we ever experienced before, and this is part of the Great Tribulation, what's called biblically Jacob's, Yaakov's troubles. And Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, you understand, our ancestor, our patriarch. Now, language, under language, what they sought to do was to cut off the mother tongue to cut off the Ethiopic, to cut off the Afro-Shemitic, you know what I'm saying, to cut off our mother tongue and not knowing the full vocabulary and keep us in, a, in, a, in an ignorance to the full vocabulary of the new. So this is one of the reasons why in our study we point out like a, a good Webster's Dictionary, in the Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, we speak about the etymology. We speak about the connotation of the word. We didn't even go into God in this particular series of lectures in, on, on that particular level to really get into God going back to the high Germanic language. So even if you look at the word God, it goes back not to the African, you understand, or the Shemitic. You don't know, see God in the Shemitic is God. God is a tribe, and that tribe is a troop. Beside the real, that troop is legion, and we know that legion is a demonic spirit. So when we look at God, you know, saying that that particular word sound, it does not compute in the same way in our mother tongues, in our original Hebraic languages as a people. So it's very important that we were forced to use the word God as a basic placeholder when reasoning with those who are not enlightened or those who are still on uh, are still uh, stuck in, in in Gentile mistranslation. They're limited to the, the the English level. But if they do what the Bible says, study and show themselves approved, they will be studying the Bible and studying the root words behind the Strong's Concordance. You understand? The Schofield references and really getting into the real meaning of the word so that mind can receive the truth. But they must have a, a, a love of the truth, you see? And having a love of the truth, that is really the grace and the gift of Jah. And brothers and sisters, I and I love the I and I pray for the I and may the I them keep I and I in the I prayers and may we all meet on Holy Mount Sion, on Holy Mount Zion, in that time, in the right time. And keep up on your studies, brothers and sisters. You know, the daily Psalms, you know, um, read at least a chapter a day. You understand? Um, keep the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath. You know, that, that, that's really, really important. You understand? That time of rest. You understand? For the spirit, for the soul, and for the body. You know, it's, it's very, very important. These are all basic steps and disciplines that, if done with, 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 with love and with faith in the true God and Father, our Black Lord and Savior, it will help you to strengthen. It will help you to come out of, of Babylon spiritually, psychologically, and ultimately physically out of this Babylon. So until we reason again, 
brothers and sisters, I will say Shalom, Ras Tafari, Ene, Ras Yadinos, Tafari, Ne. I am Ras Iadonis, otherwise known as Wendem Yadin of the Lion Jew Society. For more, www.lojsociety.org. Shalom.